Tennessee has pulled off the surprise. And the head coach of the Pesky Volunteers, down a couple of men, Bruce Pearl, who joins us now. How surprised were you with the outcome last night, Coach? I was a little surprised, Dan, but I think you're right on both counts. I think it is going to become an ESPN classic. <laughs> uh, it was special. And it's why you play the game. And uh, it uh, it was very, very improbable. The stars were aligned, and um, and it was a great, great win for our program. Now take me in the pregame speech. What do you say to the kids? Same as always. Um, I get as excited about playing an exhibition game as I do about playing a big game on the road to win a, you know, for a conference championship. It, it, that way the kids don't see you they don't see you being different. Now, inside, I'm different, but I don't ever want to let the kids see that. Um, so same talk. However, at the very end, I brought them in and I said, there really isn't anybody outside of this locker room that thinks we have any chance to win this game. I want you to do two things. Number one, don't be negative with each other. I said, I don't want anybody getting on each other for anything. Talk with each other, work it out, but don't you raise your voice at each other. There's enough pressure on everybody in this room. And number two, if we stay together and, 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 and withstand any run that they make, um, in two and a half hours we're going to be in here celebrating the greatest upset uh, in the history of Tennessee basketball. What was it like after the game? Uh, nothing that I could say could um, – you know, duplicate what was happening. In a sense, my post-game talk paled in comparison to the emotion and the jubilation uh, of those guys having, you know, accomplished what they accomplished. Um, uh, the big thing was to to compliment each and every individual about how they stepped up and stayed ready. A lot of times, Dan, when we don't get the opportunity, we don't get the promotion, we don't get the playing time, we don't get the job, we quit. And we do something else. We transfer. We stop working ourselves. And, of course, who do we hurt? But we hurt ourselves. I had three or four guys that they weren't getting their opportunity here for one reason or another, but they stayed ready. And when opportunity knocked, they were ready for it. Talking to Bruce Pearl, Tennessee head basketball coach, following the win over Kansas last night, joining us for the Dan Patrick Show. How long did you uh, wait after the fact for the traffic stop last Friday involving your players who were suspended? How long did I wait? For getting a call. Uh, oh, I think I probably got a call within 15 minutes of the traffic stop. By the police or one of your players? One of the players. What did they say? Uh, they told me they were in some trouble. And at the, at the beginning of the call, um, they weren't sure what kind of trouble because they weren't sure what was going to go down. And... Um, it was a it was a difficult time, Dan. Eleven thirty in the morning, none of them were impaired. They were driving home, but bad decisions were made. And uh, to have uh, weapons in the car, um, and to have uh, possession of marijuana, um, those things are unacceptable as it relates to then having the privilege to play basketball at the University of Tennessee. How can you police? Your kids. Now, you have less than a college football coach has. You may have 15, you know, maybe 20 with the staff of being aware of what's going on. How do you do that as a coach? Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's, that's a, that's, we can't do this right now. You know, it's everything. It's every day. I will tell you, I accept responsibility. We're not accountable enough for our own actions, let alone the actions of our of our players. And we and we need to be. I know I wasn't in that car, and I, I know I didn't commit the misdemeanor offense. But but I'm responsible for it. And. Um, Guys have got to understand that there are consequences. We do have a higher standard for student athletes than we do other students. The price that they pay is going to be greater than than than, a, than another student. And um, when they make these poor choices, the consequences is they'll lose the they're going to lose the privilege. It's the it's the ultimately the the best discipline. And then and then you know we try to get them to do the right things, and and most of the time they do. And when they don't, you know we got to deal with it with discipline. We believe in second chances. Oftentimes, the second chance comes to somebody who has talent. How much does it factor in with the second chance that you will or have given? Um, I, I would say that, um, you know, one of the things that I did, and this is important, I think, because as we move forward, you know, with, a, with a, what now appears to be a gun culture, you know, people that are carrying, um, I, I paid attention to the student judicial process. And what I mean by that is students on campus that judge their peers for what they're willing to accept on their campus as, as students. And I think that I heard two things. 
that they come across all kinds of things. Like you're not allowed to have alcohol on campus, but they're not suspending kids for that. Um, you know, sometimes uh, even a recreational drug has met with some discipline, but not dismissal from school, mm-hmm. especially on a first offense. But there are two things that have really been consistent. Number one is DUI, that if you get a DUI and the student judicial system finds out, they look at that as, a, as reckless behavior and dangerous, and they've been suspending. And the second thing was, was also any kind of weapons possession. And so if the students are saying, if you're caught with a weapon, we really feel like it's unsafe for you to be here, regardless of the rest of the facts, that's the way it is. And when I, when I saw that, I felt like I had no choice but to make the dismissal. I have a year of eligibility left if there's room on the bench. There is plenty of room for the bench. <laughs> and I really, I, I really think that this is an opportunity for you. I mean, Now, I, keep in mind, I don't have a gun, but I'm a gunner. How about this? I'm sitting there, and I'm asked questions by the media the, like two days after. Yeah. And they're like, you know, what do you think about, you know, what you guys got left? Six scholarship players and three walk-ons. And I say... We still have plenty of weapons. <laughs> oh, no. And then I stopped. Then I stopped and I apologized. And I said, you know, I, I didn't mean to say it. It was, and I, I'm saying it now. Is that funny or is it not funny? No. I don't know. I said it. I didn't God. mean to say it. Um, you could have said it. I just want to move forward, Dan. I want to move forward and I want to learn. I, I want to move forward and learn. The kids that got in trouble are good kids. I stand by that. And, um, but they made a mistake. I have plenty of weapons still left, and those are just some of my bullet points. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, is it the greatest win of your career? No, because it didn't. It wasn't a championship win. Um, it was a great win, but I mean, I would point to, I would point to wins where we, where that game was the won us a championship. Um, it was a, you know, not since 1966 have we beaten the number one team in the country here in the arena. Certainly, it was, it was one of my more, you know, obviously improbable wins. And and sometimes you know what it's funny, you, you get sometimes you do get rewarded when you do when when I believe you do the right thing and make tough decisions, and I, I promise you I'm in contact with all four of the players that have that have been under some suspension every single day, and regardless of what happens, I'm going to continue to stay with those guys, and um, at the same time take the group that remains and do the best we can. Leave it to me to uh, bring you down after a big win against Kansas. No, we're good. I'm excited about it. Yeah. We're thrilled about it. It says we got a great program, and 22,000 people showed up. And and uh, whether they believe we could win or not, they just wanted to see our kids play hard. Our kids played hard, they played smart, and they were awarded with a great victory. Congrats. Good to visit with you, Bruce. Thanks, Dan. All right. Bruce Pearl, Tennessee head coach.